You're watching the Narzo 30 Pro 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Next, we need to pry off the camera lens cover. The glass portion of the camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. Once the camera lens cover is removed, there's one more Phillips screw underneath which needs to be removed. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Now the back housing can be lifted up to the side and then the battery cable needs to be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. The back housing is also plastic. There's a graphene film which goes over the battery and over the motherboard, which helps transfer heat. And there are numerous antenna flex cables around the back housing. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. The copper tape covering the front camera connector needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove the front facing camera. Now the 8 megapixel ultra wide and 48 megapixel primary camera lens have to be disconnected. At this point, we can lift up and remove the main board. The macro lens is located here, and there's copper tape over the shield. There's a secondary microphone located on top. There's also some rubber gaskets around these connectors. On the back side, the proximity sensor is located on top. The memory card and SIM card reader is located here. And there's some more copper tape on the back shields as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste underneath on top of the processor, RAM, and the chip over here. There is one more Phillips screw which is holding down the speaker assembly that needs to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove the speaker assembly. There's some graphite film over the speaker assembly, a mesh filter over the opening, and here's a look at the speaker itself. The flex cable connecting the subboard to the main board needs to be disconnected. And the other two ends of the coaxial cables need to be disconnected as well. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. There's a rubber gasket on the charger port and headphone jack, and the primary microphone is located in the center. Here's a look at the other side. In order to remove the battery, there's a provided pull tab to help us pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Once the battery adhesive tape is pulled back, we can see the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, and the flex cable for the screen which is routed through this opening over here. So if you needed to replace your screen, you would have to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the back housing and the back housing itself. You would disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable and pry the battery off, and then you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cable through the opening over here, and reassemble your phone. Once this graphene film is peeled back, we can see a 3D layer of graphite, which runs underneath the battery and the processor over here, or the motherboard. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom center. The flex cable for the power button clicker is on this side, and the flex cable for the volume keys is located on this side. The earpiece speaker is located on top, and it's held down with some adhesive, so if you want to replace that, you can apply some heat and gently pry it off. 
As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 7 out of 10. There are a number of components which need to be removed to gain access to the screen cable to make any screen replacements. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.